So I mentioned during the podcast that one of the issues I have with powerlifting is trying to create that illusion of a very tapered core. Because, you know, I have very well-developed obliques, very well-developed abs from all the heavy training that I've done. So I actually like to do abdominal work for that. And it's not so much because I think the abdominal work is going to make my way smaller or even because I think it's going to make my way stronger. I'm really just doing bodyweight stuff. But the idea is to have better control over the core. So in particular, better control over the obliques. One of the things I really like are these seated oblique twists. They're allowing me, especially when I'm doing my quarter turns on stage, but really any time that I have some type of rotational movement, they're allowing me to use those obliques better, to be more aware of them, uh, and to have better endurance, right? Because if you're doing a long set, uh, you're doing some type of you know, cardio, you're on stage posing, you're gonna need to be able to go for more than you know the 20 or 30 seconds that a set is gonna last. So I'll just show you what a, one, one of those sets looks like, and I'll take you through some tips that I think about while I'm performing. big thing to note there is that I'm not trying to twist the w at the hips. I'm trying to twist at the waist. I'm trying to keep my hips square, right? That's when the obliques are going to come into play more. In addition, that's also what's going to allow me to hit my quarter turns better, hit my side chest better, hit my side tricep better. The other thing that I'm really focusing on is breathing up here in the chest, not deep in the belly. When you're bracing, you want to breathe deep in the belly. You want to push that abdominal wall out as much as possible. You want to make your waist as thick as possible so you have more support under heavy load. When you're performing this type of abdominal work, you really want to make sure that the abs are doing the work and you want to make sure that you're keeping your chest high, breathing up here and not down here. Because when you breathe down here, it's going to pull that rib cage down and it's going to engage other musculature that you don't want to engage. It's also going to limit your range of motion. If I have my rib cage pulled down, my ability to twist is very limited. When I have my rib cage up, slight flare, abs are still tight, pulled in a little bit, I can rotate much better. So I'll do sets of as many reps as I can. I'll try to get 50 to 75 total over the course of a training session. So pretty high rep. But again, remember what the goals are. Uh, and I'll do that about three times a week. To expand a little bit on that issue of the rib cage down versus the rib cage flared, I'm going to show you two different ways of doing sit-ups on the GHR. The first thing you want to think about is remember the purpose of the abs. They have a lot of purposes, but one of the big ones is to pull the shoulders towards the hips or the hips towards the shoulders. So if you're fully braced the whole time, and you're not able to extend thoracically, then your abs aren't gonna be working as hard as if you were not so braced, you let the rib cage flare just a little bit and you use the abs to go through that range of motion. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the difference there. The first set, I'm gonna keep a brace and you'll see that I'm hinging more at the hip. The second set, I'm not gonna keep that brace. I'm gonna let the erector stretch, let the rib cage flare a little bit and I'm just gonna use my abs to contract. It'll be a much difference in the range of motion, much difference in the feel, much difference in the purpose of the movement. If you watch powerlifters do this movement, it's probably what they're doing. It's actually very easy that way. I'm gonna show you a different way. This way is much harder, but it's gonna help you more when you're trying to improve your physique. So that, my abs were working a lot harder through a greater range of motion. I wasn't braced, but I was still working those core muscles that are gonna improve my brace let's do it in a way that's also going to help improve my physique. Would you say this is your biggest tip for people who want to get abs? No, definitely not. If people want to get abs, they really just have to lose body fat. Everybody has abs, right? It's like everybody has biceps. Your abs are not going to grow that much from resistance training. I think when they looked at cadavers, there was something like the most developed abs were like an inch thicker than the least developed abs. So you're not going to get a whole lot of muscle growth there. What you can do is strip off all the body fat that's over the abs and that way, it's kind of, you're, people are going to be able to see your definition, and that's what a six-pack is, right? It's not so much having massively developed abs, it's having extremely low body fat that shows your abs.